Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are making an inventory system for Roblox Studio. So this is what it's going to look like. We have an inventory button right here. We've got items already in our inventory. We can equip the items by just clicking on them and we'll get an equipped text label right here to let us know that it is in our starter pack. And that is where they go when we equip them. And actually use them, you just use it like you would any other weapon in your starter pack. You just click on it and make sure it's working. Yep. Slingshot. And then we can also unequip them by just clicking on them again and that'll unequip it. And yeah, it's a, it's a simple inventory, but it's effective and that's what we're going to be making today. So let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the UI elements. So go to your starter GUI and add in a screen GUI. I'm going to name this to be in not inventory open inventory GUI. And inside that we are going to add in a text button. And we're going to name this text button to be open button. I'm going to drag it in the bottom right corner. And now for the position, no, not the position for the size, we need to make sure it's not using offset, but rather using scale. So I'm going to do 0 0.10, 0 0.10. And then we can just resize it to however we want. Now, I don't like the corners. I like for them to be rounded. So inside the button, add in a UI corner. And this will round the corners of the button for you. And for this button, the background color, I want it to be black. And for the text color, I want it to be white. I want the font to be for Doka 1. And let's increase the font size, the text size, to be, we'll do 30. And for the text, we'll say inventory. All right, go back to your starter GUI, add in another screen GUI, rename it to be inventory GUI. And inside of that, we are going to add in a frame. Select the frame, bring it to the center. For the background color, we're going to do black. For the size, we need to make it use scale, not offset. So we'll do 0 0.2, 0 0.20, 0 0.20. 0 .20. And then just resize it and position it the way you want. I'm going to get it right in the middle. That looks fine. And then we, uh, we also want to add in the UI corner to round the corners. And then we want to add in something that's going to make it a whole lot easier to set up the UI. Or it's going to just let us not have to manually set up every single slot for the inventory. And what we're going to add is called a grid layout, a UI grid layout. And we can't see anything, but like if we were to add in another frame, for example, it puts it right there. Like it puts it, it starts it in the top left corner and it will just keep filling to the right. And once it uh, doesn't have enough room over here, it'll just go to the next row and start filling up that row. So that saves us from having to go through and individually do slot by slot, which saves a lot of time. Like if we were to duplicate this, it puts it right there you can see we can just keep duplicating it and it will just fill up the grid so let's delete those frames so now we want to add in a button that we can use to close our inventory so underneath the inventory GUI we're gonna add in a text button and select the button and name it to be close button and 
And let's go ahead and add in the UI corner. And on the button, scroll down to where size is. And like we do for everything, set it to we'll just do 0 0.1, 0, 0.1, 0. And then you can resize it the way you want. That looks good enough. Um, for the background color, I'm going to do red. And for the text, we are going to change it to Ferdoka 1. We're going to do uh, not text scaled. We're going to change the text just to be a capital X. And text color, we're going to do white. And then we can adjust the size right here. And that should get our UI set up and we should be ready to start scripting. Uh, something else, and we'll probably come back to this. You can adjust the grid layout settings however you want. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this actually. For the cell padding, let's just do See, it's using offset. So let's do 0 0.005. No. Let's do 0 0.01. 0. 0. 0.01. 0. And then the cell size. Do like, I don't know. Let's try 0.18, offset 0, scale 0.18, offset 0. And so now if we were to add in some more frames, let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. We can live with that for now. Delete those frames and we are ready to start scripting. So go to your starter player, go to the starter player scripts and we are going to add in a local script. So let's go ahead and rename it to be inventory script. Then we'll just put a comment. All right, so now we need to get our variables, references to our variables. So we're just gonna say local player equals game dot players dot local player. Let me make this bigger so you guys can read it easier. And then we will say local inventory frame equals player dot player GUI wait for child inventory GUI wait for child frame. All right, we need to get a reference to our open button. Then we need our close button. And in order for our inventory to work, we are going to need a remote event. So go to your replicated storage and let's go ahead and add in that remote event. And we are going to call it equip tool event. So equip tool event. 
And so we need to get a reference to that in our script. So we will say local equip tool event equals game dot replicated storage wait for child equip tool event and so we need to make a few tables to manage our inventory so we'll just say local inventory equals and then brackets and now we need to get one uh, to track our currently equipped items so we will say local equipped items equals curly brackets and we need to make another one for our button click event connections so we will say local button connections equals curly brackets so now we need to make a function to toggle our inventory, toggle the visibility of the inventory. So we're going to say local function toggle inventory. And we're going to pass through a, a bool, uh, which is what will tell us, tell the function uh, if we should toggle the inventory as active or inactive. And we will say inventory frame dot visible equals is visible and then we also need to hide the close button because the close button's not a part of the frame it's not a child of the inventory frame so we need to say close button dot visible equals is visible so now we need to hook up a mouse click to our open button to toggle the inventory to be true so we'll say open button dot mouse button one click and connect function then toggle inventory true now we need to do the opposite so we need to do close button dot mouse button one click colon connect and pass through a function the function that we are passing through is toggle inventory except we want to set it to false all right now we want to make a function for creating an inventory slot so this is about to be a lot but I'm not really going to explain it too well I will put comments in the script that I uh, paste as a comment on the video so you can copy and paste all of this if you want to into your uh, inventory script and it will have comments there to help you better understand it but I'm just going to crank this out because it's kind of a big function and we want to pass through a slot index so we want to say local slot frame equals instance dot new and we want to create a new frame. We want the slot frame dot size. And I don't even think it's necessary to set the size. I'm just doing it just in case. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it'd be fine without it because we got that grid layout which sets the size. It's gonna override whatever we put here. But I'm just gonna do it anyways. Uh, like I said, just in case udim.new and we'll do 0 0.2 comma 0 comma 0 0.2 comma 0 and we will say slot frame dot name equals slot slot index and slot frame just to make it prettier we will set the background color to be color uh, color 3 dot from RGB and we will do 0 comma 0 comma 0 
and that is black. So we want the background to be black. And now we need to set the parent to be the inventory frame. All right, and similar to our other stuff, we want to add a UI corner to this. I want to set the corner dot corner radius to be u dim new zero comma ten. And we gotta set the parent slot frame. So we've made the frame but we actually want it we want a button to be able to click on the item. Uh, this will equip and unequip the item. So let's make a button. Let's set the size of that button, which again, I don't think it's necessary, but we're just doing it I guess I could easily just remove it and see if it still works. But, you know, it's good practice to do this kind of do these kinds of things. So we're just going to do it. Now we want the button not button, we want button dot text to be empty. We want to set the text color. Text color three equals color three dot from RGB. And this will be 255 comma 255 comma 255 and that is white. Now we want to set the background color background color 3 equals color 3 from RGB and 0 comma 0 comma 0 and now we got to set the parent equals slot frame and just like the UI corner for our frame we need to add a UI corner for our button so we'll say local button corner equals instance dot new UI corner and button corner dot corner radius equals udim dot new zero comma ten Then we need to set the parent button corner dot parent equals button. And so underneath uh, on the bottom of our slot, we want to have some text that tells us if it is if it is equipped or not. So we need to make a label. We're going to call it equipped label equals instance dot new. And this will be a text label. Then equipped label dot size equals udim two dot new. And this will be one comma zero comma zero point two comma zero. Now we need to set the position. So we'll say equipped label dot position equals udim two dot new and this will be zero comma zero comma zero point eight comma zero. And now equipped label dot 
text and we just want this to be empty for now. Now we want to set the text color. So equipped label dot text color three equals color three dot from RGB 255 comma 255 comma 255 for white and we want to set the background transparency to be one uh, we want the the background to be transparent so we will say equipped label dot background transparency equals one and we need to set the parent so equipped label dot parent equals slot frame. And last but not least for this function, we just want to return the button and the equipped label. Excellent. So now we need a function to equip and unequip the items. So let's say local function we'll just call it equip item and we'll pass through an item name and a slot label and we will say we need to do a check to see if the item is already equipped so we'll say if equipped items and in square brackets we will say We'll pass through an item name. Then we want to unequip the tool by notifying the server. So we can't just do all of this locally. We could, we could do most of it, but the server needs to know when we equip and unequip an item or else we're not going to be able to use the item when we equip it. So we need to say equip tool event fire server item name false. So that will unequip the item. After that we want to say equipped items square brackets item name equals nil and we want to say slot label dot text slot label dot text is empty this will just remove that equipped label and then just return outside of this if statement we want to equip the new tool by notifying the server so we instead of unequipping we want to equip so we will say equip tool event colon fire server the item name that we are equipping and true and equipped items square brackets item name equals true slot label dot text equals equipped all right now we need a function to update the GUI of our inventory so we want local function update inventory GUI We'll say for i, comma, item, and i pairs, pass through inventory, do, and we need to either find or create a slot. So to do that, just local slot equals inventory frame, colon find first child, and we want to look for slot 
underscore dot dot i and we need a local button and an equipped label then we will say if not slot then so if not slot if we don't find a slot then button comma equipped label equals create slot so if we don't find a slot we want to create a slot and then we say else if there is a slot we just need to get it we just need to get the get the button and we need to get the equipped label so we will say button equals slot find first child of class text button equipped label equals slot find first child of class text label then after the end immediately after the equipped label we want to make sure that we don't connect multiple event listeners to the same button so to do that we will say if button connections square brackets I then we want to disconnect any previous connections button connections square brackets I colon disconnect so we will say button dot text equals item or empty so now we want to connect the click event so it either equips or unequips the item. So to do that, we are going to say button connections i equals button mouse button one click connect function And inside of that, we will say if button dot text is not equal to empty, then we want to equip the item. And we will pass through the button dot text and the equipped label. All right, after that, we want to set the label to be equipped if it's currently equipped. So we will just say if equipped items then equipped label dot text equals equip equipped else equipped label dot text equals nothing and that's it for this function and we are almost done with this script we still got a server script to write but that one is shorter than this so now we need a function to add an item to the inventory so just local function add item pass through the item name and we will say table dot insert inventory comma item name then update inventory gui this, that is what refreshes the inventory UI. So every time we uh, add an item, we just refresh the GUI. 
So we just refresh the GUI and then we want to initially hide the inventory frame. So we'll say inventory frame dot visible equals false. And let's also add in some, some test items. So we'll say add item sword. And we're gonna get these from the toolbox in a second. So add item sword, let's also add item slingshot. We'll also grab the rocket launcher. And yeah, we'll just do those three for now. And that should do it for this script. Um, now we need to create a server script in our server script service. So we want to go to our server script service and we want to add in a script. I'm going to name mine to be inventory server script. And we will comment at the top what it is, inventory script server side. And we need to get that remote event that is in our replicated storage. So we'll just say local equip tool event equals game dot replicated storage. Let's do game colon get service replicated storage. Wait for child equip tool event. And we need to make an event handler for equipping and unequipping the tools. So we will just say equip tool event uh, on server event. And so this is gonna fire. So yeah, that is gonna fire whenever we do this right here, the equip tool event fire server or fire server right here. This is equipping it and this is unequipping it. So equip tool event dot on server event colon connect and we want to pass through a function which in that function will pass through the player the item name and the bool for is equipping then we want to do a check for if the item exists in replicated storage so we'll say local tool equals game let's let's just do this real quick let's get our replicated storage get service replicated storage and then right here we can just say replicated storage and here we can say replicated storage colon find first child of item name and if we find the tool we want to say if tool then then if is equipping then inside of that we want to equip the tool by cloning it and then placing it in our backpack so we'll say local cloned tool equals tool colon clone then cloned tool dot parent equals player dot backpack else we want to unequip the tool by removing it from both the backpack and the character so we'll say local tool in backpack equals player dot backpack find first child item name local tool in character equals player dot character 
find first child item name and if we find a tool in the backpack we want to destroy it then tool in backpack colon destroy and we want to do the same thing for if we find a tool in the character so if tool in character then tool in character colon destroy and that should do it actually yeah that's it for our server script I believe anyways we haven't tested it out to make sure it works but that's what we're about to do and in order to do that we want to go to our toolbox right here and click this little filter icon I guess you could just get whatever tool you wanted to um, if it would let me click it that would be awesome there we go uh, and under the creator search for Roblox with a capital R and it sometimes doesn't it sometimes won't find it for you it's really annoying There we go. And done. And th these will be like, I guess they're official. They're like official tools that we can use. So we want to grab the sword. Just click OK. And then, yeah, put it in your starter pack. It doesn't matter. We're going to put it in replicated storage in a second. Uh, what did we grab? Or what did we, what are we testing with? We got a sword. I think we did a slingshot. And what was the other? Rocket launcher. I think I passed it. Yeah, there we go. Let me make sure those are the three tools I got. Yep. So now you just want to move these to replicated storage. And we got to change the name to match what we put right here. It's got to match. It's got to be exactly the same. And it is case sensitive. So I did sling shot. Sword. And rocket launcher with a space. So if we hit play now, let's see what happens. We just got this little red X right here. Uh, I think if we just go into our open inventory uh, GUI, no, not open inventory, inventory GUI, close button, and we just set it to to not be active, not active, uh, visible. Where where is visible? Yeah, turn visibility off on start, and uh, that should make it so it's not visible on the start and so let's see what happens we press inventory we've got our sword our slingshot and our rocket launcher let's click our sword hey we got it equipped and we can use it if we click it again it unequips it and we've got our slingshot. We can equip all three at the same time. It just puts all three in our backpack. And then we just actually uh, activate it or equip it, I mean, uh, by just clicking on it in our starter pack. So let's see. Yep, that's working. Everything should be working. Yep. Awesome. So with that, we are going to conclude this long video. If you made it all the way through, I really appreciate it guys, it really helps the algorithm out a lot with my videos, the, the longer you watch them. I will put the scripts in comments and pin them down below in the comment section of this video. I will also put this uh, project, the project file on my Patreon for free, so you can also just go over there and download it and 
and open it up in Roblox Studio and it should just work for you. And yeah, I really appreciate it guys. And I will see you in the next one.